The people of Gravity Falls were often targets of chaos, which resulted in them making some poor choices, whether it be something simple, like terrorizing the cashier at a local store, or something large, like being tricked by an all-powerful demon, everyone made mistakes. Some were larger than others, and often snowballed into affecting the whole town. There were a few that even left their mark for generations to come, but of all the people and creatures in Gravity Falls, who had the most brains? Yo yo, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Gravity Falls, Dumb to Brilliant. First, it's the practically brainless. This spot is reserved for those who have a less than average intelligence, to put it nicely. Our ranking for most dumb is the boy band several times. Much of their lack of intelligence wasn't their fault. There was only so much they would have been able to learn about the world, being bussed around from city to city, and being kept in cages. They weren't able to live as people, but as giant pets, being fed and given water the same way a hamster would have been cared for. After they'd been freed by Mabel, Candy, and Grenda, they tried their best to adapt to life outside of being prisoners. That's a valid perspective! The episode ended with Stan finding them eating his garbage, implying that they weren't doing too well. But the band reappeared in the final episodes to help power the shack in order to fight Bill. Next is Rumble McSkirmish. Much like the boy band, Rumble didn't have much say in how much he knew of the world. After all, he was only programmed to do so much, and that mainly meant finding anything he came across. He caused havoc as he rampaged through the town, shot fireballs, and brought anything in his path. Our next spot goes to the Manitars. As entertaining as they were, they were not always on the ball. While the first Manitar to encounter Dipper showed a level of awareness to Dipper's distress, the rest of the time, they were more brawn than brains. They had been unwilling to form a truce with the multi-bear, even when Dipper spoke up on the bear's behalf. Next is the marriage-obsessed gnomes. In their search for a queen, these little creepers went to any lengths necessary. They tricked Mabel into a small summer romance, and when she reacted poorly to her assumed boyfriend being gnomes in a jacket, they tried holding her hostage. While their massive form was a bit of a threat, they didn't utilize it well, relying too much on raw force to get their way. In the end, they were tricked and defeated by a leaf blower. Next, we have the Lilliputians. The Lilliputians were obsessed with being seen as the best, divided in various groups among themselves that were almost always at war. They were easily bribed, with the idea of getting a shiny sticker to hold over the other groups. When Mabel took the incentive away, the Lilliputians were enraged, and decided the next logical move would be to cut Mabel open to get the sticker back. This following section goes to the spectators of the Minimart, Pa and Ma Duskerton. They were easily frightened to death just because the times were changing. They were unable to adapt to how teenagers began to dress and behave, and literally dropped dead from fright. They blamed teens for their deaths rather than their own inability to adjust, and were only pacified when Dipper dressed up and sang for them. The wannabe rocker, the love god, was not as bright as many others in the cast. While he had an important job to do, he kind of sucked at it. The internet pretty much does my job for me nowadays. He made random people fall for each other with no logic behind the matchup, and then lashed out when Mabel and Dipper followed his example. Though at least in the kids' defense, they had somewhat of a plan. The love god was much more invested in being worshipped than he was doing his actual job. Next is the puppeteer Gabe Benson. Gabe was vain and superficial. He was oblivious to anything that didn't have to directly do with him, and believed himself to be far more talented and beloved than he actually was. He took to Mabel quickly since she praised him for his work, and it effectively stroked his ego. Still, it's hard to take him seriously when he decided to leave Mabel's performance while making out with his hand puppets. To each their own, I guess? Next is Wendy's father, Manly Dan. Dan is hardworking and protective, and was a force to be reckoned with, with residents relying on his strength. But all that mass led to Dan being clumsy, and he often used more force than needed when doing simple tasks. It's also worth noting that while Dan clearly has experience in building homes, he failed to provide himself with a big enough place so he wasn't knocking into everything all the time. You would think that after just a few days, he would have found some way to expand his home, especially since he has a few kids to take into consideration. Next, we have Mabel's imaginary boyfriends, Kraz and Xyler. Being figments of Mabel's imagination, they had a limited worldview and were naive. All they knew for sure was that they adored Mabel and would do what they could to keep her safe, from standing up to Bill to taking Dipper to court. Next is Toby Determined, editor of the local paper. Toby was generally nosy and seen as a pest. 
for the most part during the series, he was harmless. The only time Toby was shown to be a threat was when he agreed to help Gideon trick Dipper into a trap in order to get the phone number of a reporter Toby had a crush on. Now it's time to pay your end of the bargain. Usually when he was seen though, he was using random household items trying to pass them off as professional equipment, such as when he used a cinder block as a camera. It wouldn't be a complete list without the memorable police force, Deputy Durland and Sheriff Blubbs. It's not unusual to see cops in animation that aren't exactly great at their jobs. Blubbs and Durland fit this trope in many ways never taking Dipper or Mabel's concerns seriously. However, they were also in on the secret around Quentin Tremblay and weren't completely ignorant in the odd happenings around town. Next is Robbie. It's hard to give credit to a guy who feels like he's competing with a child for the attention of a girl. Sure, Dipper had a crush on Wendy, but it didn't really justify Robbie threatening the kid. He was also clueless when it came to his own lack of musical talent, doing the bare minimum when playing. As he thought, simply holding a guitar would make people swoon. At least he came around after he and Wendy went their separate ways, and by the end of the series was doing more work on himself. Next is the most adorable character, Waddles. Why is a pig considered so smart compared to so many other residents in Gravity Falls? Well, much of that came down to when he had increased intellect and was able to properly communicate with everyone. It was revealed that even without his increased intelligence, Waddles had an understanding of the things happening around him and held a love and devotion to Mabel. Her care for him was what eventually led Waddles to removing the enhanced aspects of himself and returned to simply being her pet pig. Next is the villain, Probabilitor the Annoying. He thought himself to be all-knowing and powerful, and so assumed everyone else around him lacked any ability. That led to him figuring a single guard would be enough to hold off Stan and Mabel from saving Dipper and Ford. He also didn't consider that anyone could beat him at his own game, literally. Sure, the odds of a perfect 38 being rolled were slim, but not impossible. Next is the eventual mayor always spouting encouragement, Tyler Cutabiker. Tyler may have been encouraging, always shouting for people to get him, but he was also really indecisive. When shopping in the mystery shack, he asked questions like if the fur trout came in a different animal and took so long deciding between shirts that Stan had just locked him in. Puma shirt, panther shirt, puma shirt. At least we can say Tyler's inability to make a choice quickly could lead to interesting results, as seen when he showed up to the party Stan hosted with the two shirts sewn into one. Next is the grade school students. These characters are able to improve their craft or vile schemes, but have a way to go from the top. First in this section is Mermando, a brief love interest to Mabel. He found himself stuck in the local pool due to an unfortunate set of circumstances. What? I don't care that you're a merman. He had been reluctant to expose what he really was to Mabel, but accepted her help when she formed a plan to get him back to the water. Next is the waitress, Lazy Susan. She was incredibly sweet, but could be clingy, as seen during her brief romance with Stan. She was often seen taking care of the diner, chasing people from under the tables. When she had noticed the gnomes, she attempted to report it, only to have her memories wiped by Ivan. Next is another tight spot with Mabel's friends, Candy and Grenda. They quickly bonded with Mabel, embracing Mabel's optimism and imagination. They were always friendly and encouraging, only going against Mabel when they were worried about how she was taking things too far with several times. Though they understood the delight of having celebrities around, they made an effort to get through to Mabel to get her to willingly let the boy band go. Next is another villain, Summerween Trickster. He was an interesting creature, and in some ways, his resentment towards the holiday was understandable. Wanting to be appreciated rather than toss aside is something a lot of fans could relate to, but a lot of the mess and terror the trickster caused could have been handled if he was just upfront about how he felt and why. Next, we have the parents of Stan and Ford, Phil Brick and Mrs. Pines. They clearly care for their children, though they express their concern and affection in different ways. Mrs. Pines made a successful business for herself, running a telephone psychic gig to help provide for the family. Phil Brick was more traditional, working a more straightforward business to be an example to their boys. It's a shame that though they cared for both of their sons, they refused to hear Stan out on how he hadn't meant to hurt Ford's chances. That led to the two of them spending the rest of their lives not really knowing what happened to their children. Next is the shockingly peaceful Multibear. Yeah, he had been exposed to have haunted the Manitars, but he was a predator and needed to eat to survive. It wasn't because he had some ignorant view on the Manitars. But will you grant a magical beast one last request? 
It was just that they were going to hunt him anyway, so he figured he may as well prey on the creatures that wanted him dead. Next is Archibald Corduroy. It's tragic that Archibald was taken advantage of by Nathaniel Northwest and lost his life in an avoidable mudslide. He can't be blamed for how he vowed revenge against the Northwest family. After all, they hadn't changed their ways. They were still snobs that threw around their money and influence to get their way while looking down on the other residents. Next, we have a shared spot with Preston Northwest and his ancestor, Nathaniel Northwest. They were both arrogant and too proud for their own good. Nathaniel had no issue with having a land stripped to the point that it caused a massive mudslide that killed dozens of people. Preston held that same disregard for those around him and had been the first to offer his service to Bill, planning on obtaining some semblance of power by rounding up everyone else. Both failed to take the bigger picture into consideration, and in the end, Preston was punished for his actions and lost his family fortune. Next is Blendon Blandon, one of the most reckless time travelers. Why would you leave your time-traveling equipment unsupervised, or use a baby wipe as a way to erase someone's memory? Blendon wasn't the best at staying under the radar, leading to him being stripped of his position when Dipper and Mabel used his device. For a while, it led to Blendon seeking revenge against them, blaming them for his own mistakes. When Bill came into power, Blendon attempted to offer help in the form of getting Time Baby and the other time travelers, assuming they would be powerful enough to stop the demon. However, he had greatly miscalculated and wound up not being much help in the final confrontation. Next is the Average Folk. They are, as the name implies, pretty average in terms of intelligence. Not too smart, but not too dumb, normies. We have another video game program with Giffany. Unlike Rumble, Giffany was much better at adapting to her surroundings. Much of that likely has to do with her being a part of a choice-based game, and it made her a terrifying antagonist. Giffany knew how to manipulate anyone that came across her game, using a player's lack of confidence to get them to believe they needed her. Oh, Zeus. I am not an ordinary game. When Suze decided to go on his date and leave Giffany behind, she became enraged, using the technology around her to get to Suze and launch an attack. Next, we have Suze. He was a sweet handyman but was awkward around people. He was initially dismissed as too dull or clumsy to be involved in anything dealing with the journals, but proved to be an asset. Suze led them through escaping the pterodactyl nest and had assisted in finding the fabled lake monster. Next is a group ranking, the Wax Figures. It doesn't help that they were led by Wax Sherlock Holmes. After all, how do you compete with the famed detective, even if it was a cheap copy? Well, aside from taking them out by using sunlight and other sources of heat. Next is Spider-Woman Darlene. The saying goes, a wolf in sheep's clothing, but Darlene changed that to a spider morph in a woman's skin. She spent her time luring tourists where she could feed on them and then use their bodies to make the location even creepier, drawing more tourists to her nest. Not a clear villain, but an antagonist, we have the Unicorns. Specifically, the unicorn that manipulated Mabel served a spot on our list. She didn't have any real motivation other than gaining satisfaction from Mabel being distressed. When her lies were revealed, she didn't show any remorse, figuring Mabel's spirit was broken enough not to try anything. Not pure of heart! Next is our favorite lazy cashier, Wendy. Wendy was always down for an adventure, and so leaped at the chance to help Dipper with stuff concerning the journals. She may not have fully understood the gravity of it, but she was happy to lend a hand. When Bill took over the town, Wendy had been one of the few to successfully hide from the demons. When cornered by Gideon and his lackeys, Wendy showed her full potential in combat and thrashed quite a few of them, giving Dipper an opening to save Mabel. Next is the underhanded car salesman, Bud Gleeful. He wasn't quite the mastermind that his son was, but Bud was still a successful business owner. He helped run the Tent of Telepathy and ran a car dealership on top of it. However, all that influence around town clearly went to his head. No matter how well known and liked you are, there's no reason that you should think buying someone's niece is a logical plan. Next is Suze's Abuelita. After Suze was let down time and again by his father, Abuelita knew that he would have trouble getting close to people. Her methods of protecting Suze were a little odd, with her just popping up in random places to spy on him and casually snooping through his things. But we have to give her props for avoiding detection until she wanted to be seen. She could seriously work for the FBI. The next spot goes to Pacifica. Raised by Preston, Pacifica had grown up being told she was better than everyone else due to the family's money and status. 
For a long time, she believed him and was completely under his thumb. It wasn't until she came to appreciate Dipper and Mabel that she finally stood up to her father and saved Dipper for being punished for her family's actions. Next is the cult leader, Blind Ivan. Leader of the Blind Eye Society, he thought that erasing everyone's memories to hide the odd things around town was the best route to take. He didn't care about hurting people to keep the society and the town's creatures a secret, thinking it was worth hurting people beyond repair. He was arrogant and thought himself untouchable, which led him to losing all of his memories. Now we're getting into the college bound. These are the characters who are just a stone throw away from the top, proving they have the ability to be the best, but just fall short. First in this section goes to the former president, Quentin Trimbley III. To say Quentin was unusual would be putting it lightly. He appointed babies to be his cabinet, tried using a key on the solid surface of a box to break free, and waged war on pancakes. Because he's a weird guy, he was erased from history up until Mabel and Dipper found him and brought him back to office. There is a chance Quentin would have been hidden away forever had it not been for the strange clues he left behind. Next is the devious Erdman Bradman. He had been the man behind using several times, keeping them imprisoned any time they weren't performing. What is wrong with you boys? His actions weren't right by any means, but we have to give props for the scheme he had going. Not only did he have these full-grown men ignorant to what their circumstances really were, but he had clones backed up in case something happened to one of the members. Next is the ever-optimistic Mabel. It would be easy to look at Mabel and assume that she's a ditzy kid without any deep thoughts. However, just because she liked to enjoy the little things in life, like stickers and sprinkles, didn't mean she wasn't capable of figuring things out. She got the gnomes' guard down and used a leaf blower on them, a tactic that, when Ford found it written in the journal, he praised the creativity. When she met Mormando, Mabel found a way to sneak him out of the pool and get him back to the water so he could reunite with his family. Some fans do give Mabel grief for being tricked by Bill, but we have to give Mabel a break on that. After all, she had been in a very vulnerable state, thinking Dipper was going to leave her behind. It would be difficult enough at Mabel's age to face losing a best friend, but with Dipper being her twin, she had literally never known a time in her life without him being around, and this was after Dipper spent all summer leaving her behind to pursue the journals, even refusing to spend summer ween with her when initially asked, just because he was afraid of what Wendy would think. Mabel may have been childish in many ways, but in truth, that was an asset. Her optimism was what allowed her to trust Stan and leave the portal on, leading to Ford finally returning home. She remembered Bill's weakness being his eye and took full advantage of that. Plus, her odd way of doing things was what led to her and Dipper finding Quentin Trimbley III. Next is Dipper. Already fascinated with the unusual, Dipper soaked up the information in the journals like a sponge, taking on the task of learning everything he could about Gravity Falls and the odd happenings. His observations weren't always right, such as when he thought Mabel was dating a zombie, and he sometimes jumped the gun without really thinking things through, like when he gave Mermando reverse CPR. It also didn't help that once Dipper was fixated on something, he rarely took anything else into consideration, which often led to him neglecting Mabel, even after all she did to help him. Thankfully, Dipper was a kind of kid to learn from his mistakes and make things right, and knew when he needed help when taking on something dangerous. After his niece and nephew is the con man, Stan Pines. It takes a lot of guts and imagination to be a swindler. Stan admitted that he didn't have a knack for book smarts, but through trial and error and a lot of years on the road, he was able to pick up enough to know what people wanted and how to capitalize on it. His products were often shams, of course, with Stan being run out of more than a few states, but he learned how to hide his identity and continue traveling. When he was called by Ford and his twin was sucked into the portal, Stan stayed to find a way to bring his brother back. Even though the machine wasn't like anything he had ever worked on, Stan wanted to fix his mistakes and get Ford back home, and so dedicated 30 years of his life to observing Ford's notes and putting the portal back together. On top of all that stress, Stan also managed to create a successful tourist trap, funding his life enough that he didn't have to worry about the cost it took to make things right while also providing for himself. Next is Gideon Gleeful. Gideon was one of the most cunning and intelligent characters in the series. He was well aware of the odd happenings in Gravity Falls and had been able to come across one of the journals all on his own. Though he didn't initially intend to use Mabel as a way to get the journals, having been genuinely attracted to her, Gideon knew how to use the situation to get to Dipper and tried to get to the journal Dipper had in his possession. It was also impressive how Gideon ran his psychic scheme, hiding microphones and cameras all over town in form of his merchandise in order to make his readings believable. Gideon also noticed the flaw in Bill's throne of people frozen in place 
leading to everyone being freed from being stone. Finally, we have the geniuses. These characters are able to run large-scale operations. They're dangerous and powerful because they know how to outsmart anyone. Truly Machiavellian when it comes to power. First in this section is Time Baby. On the one hand, Time Baby had cosmic knowledge and power on his side, making him fearless when he attempted to face Bill and rid Gravity Falls of the demon. On the other hand, he also had mannerisms that many babies generally have, making him difficult to consider more of a threat. And while yes, he had been willing to face Bill, he had been incredibly rash in his approach and underestimated how powerful Bill had become. The miscalculation cost not only Time Baby his life, but the lives of more than a few who followed him into the conflict. The bronze medal for most brilliant is Ford Pines. Ford was a gifted and dedicated student growing up, and that obsession with learning never left him. The main reason for his downfall was his pride. Pride that kept him from seeing past Bill's tricks, wanting to believe that the demon was a muse. Pride that kept Ford from simply destroying his research and insisting Stan take it to the ends of the earth. Pride that kept him from growing close to Stan and letting his twin onto his plan for the shack. Pride led to Ford encouraging Dipper to stay, driving a wedge between him and Mabel. Thankfully, he was able to work past this, but not before causing a ton of damage that would have been avoidable had he been able to think objectively. The silver medal of most brilliant goes to Fiddle Ford McGucket. McGucket was labeled as a crazed and failed engineer, having lost many of his memories at his own hand. However, that only made what he accomplished even more impressive. Even after he lost the respect of the town, McGucket built impressive machines. He was even able to fashion a way to fight against Bill, with the demon nearly unable to find a weak point. I've made some thingamadiculous robomajigs in my day! Though he wasn't the man he once was, we also can't ignore the fact that his skills helped Ford build a portal in the first place. Finally, the gold medal of most brilliant goes to Bill Cipher. Ancient, powerful, and clever, Bill knew how to get what he wanted. His plot nearly succeeded, and it's no wonder as to why. Bill was excellent at manipulation to trick even the smartest individuals to follow him. When Ford finally saw through the demon's intentions, Bill was able to use Dipper and Mabel as leverage. It doesn't hurt that Bill also had the power to bend reality to his will and was only held back by an unexplainable field keeping him and Gravity Falls. All right, that's a wrap, folks. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our dumb to brilliant playlist, where we figure out which characters have the most wits. But most importantly, stay wicked.